Welcome to Crowncast Podcast, Episode One. Yo, what's up? Uh, my name is Garrett. This is my business partner, Ben. Ben Graham on the mic. Ben Onai, Child of Pain. Ben back yonder. Ben back yonder. Better nickname. Yeah, we got a couple of them. And welcome to our podcast. This is the first podcast we've ever done. This is it. Why are we doing a podcast, Ben? I mean, I think for for me. Uh, one, we want to kind of tell our stories and, and show people more than just just pictures and maybe a, a, an occasional video or whatever right. on our social media. Um, but one thing I say a lot uh, is that people um, don't really know what we do. Right. So it's very hard. I mean, even when we're like filling out some kind of form or, you know, we fill out a lot of permits and government stuff, whatever, to do jobs. But there's always boxes you can check. You know, when you're, you, and they try to put you in a category. Right. Even on social media, when we're trying to like put out uh, ads and stuff like that, mm-hmm. we don't fit in any of these boxes. It's, it's, it's kind of a weird thing. Right. So we're in small groups with other business partner, business leaders and stuff in our community. But it's the same way when, when I'm even talking to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you guys do the sound and lights. You know, that's kind right. of what we get a lot. Right. And that is what we do. But well, let's get let's get people up to. Up to speed, yeah. Because people probably don't even know who we are. They, they don't. I'm still trying to figure out who I am. So probably don't know what we do either. <laughs> so Crown Design Group. That's our that's our company. It's part of the Crown Universe that we've created. Crown Global. We are right now at Crown HQ, aka our uh, our office. <laughs> so this is where we sit most days, and we try to take over the world AVL style. Yep. Um, so what we are, we are an AVL integration company. What does that mean? We design, install, service, anything, audio, video, lighting for commercial um, applications. Uh, most of our clients are churches. We're kind of, we're church guys. Yep. We, we grew up in the church. We worked at churches. Yep. Uh, we have a heart for the church. We love the church. Uh, we'll work for anyone though. Yep. <laughs> we, we do work for schools and private companies and yep. everything in between. But you know, this podcast is kind of a way to show it off too. kind of show off some of the projects we've done, mm-hmm. uh, give a glimpse inside of like the AVL integration world. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a cool one. I mean, we kind of fell into it in a weird way, which I think, you know, we'll get into one day. We'll probably right. go through our story, but every single project's different, right? Every single project's got its own cool things, either like some, uh, some, some issue that we have to overcome or uh, a cool new design. And uh, so I think it's worth showing. I think people will like it. Go through these projects, show a project, uh, walk through the process of design, walk through mm-hmm. the process of uh, trouble troubleshooting issues, um, being creative. I mean, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So, uh, and we're going to do, um, just to share with everybody, we're going to do, you know, whatever we want to call them, project project breakdowns or whatever where we do specific projects right we're going to go through them and kind of give you a look behind the curtain like a backstage because we do this a lot too when we're at jobs when we're done we take little tours with people right and we take them backstage and we show them everything and they get this whole new um, view of what actually went into everything not just this finished product so i think this podcast will do that too per project and show people little details and then we're going to do just kind of random episodes too because we talk about all kinds of stuff in, in this little uh, office that we're in um, yeah so i think it'll be i think it'll be interesting one way or the other and um kind of never know what you're going to get yeah we've uh for those of you who don't know we started crown design group from nothing we uh, built it up from nothing yep just pure sweat blood equity uh and there's a whole world of the small business um you know the small business world that people don't understand either Right. Uh, the struggles, the uh, decisions we have to make, how to do it, how to build a company, how to get out there, how to get more work, right. dealing with the government, right. dealing with the government, right. paying taxes, paying taxes. I mean, all this stupid stuff. And we talk about that a lot just sitting here. Yep. And so I guess for this podcast, it's going to kind of be almost a fly on the wall in our office to a yep. certain degree. But we'll still go over like projects yeah. and stuff. Look behind the curtain and business stuff, too. Not right. just on projects. So kind of what we deal with behind the scenes that nobody ever sees. Right. Um, 
it'll be good to talk about and good to share. And hopefully it's interesting to people and helpful to people too. Right. Um, Cause yeah, we have a unique one here with crown. It's a, it's, it's been fun. It's, it's quite, been a, fun. quite a unique thing and a good, a really big blessing for us and our families and this company yeah. that's grown so much in the past over 10 years now. Right. Um, so yeah, that's a whole other podcast, I think, yeah. where we talk about Crown and how we started. I, I think that'd be really fun. And the plan to take over the, the earth. Yes, take over the world. The Crown universe. But So today we have a project we're going to go through. We want to walk through it. We'll talk about the vision of it, mm-hmm. how, how it came to be, um, some of the struggles, some of the, some of the issues with the project, uh, how we got through it, and, uh, and the final you know, the final look, yeah. the final, pro- the final, uh, product of what it is. Yeah. So, uh, before that, let's jump into a quick commercial break. Uh, Cha-ching. and we're back. Okay, here we go. So, uh, Ben, why don't you intro- introduce this project? Yeah. So this is, um, a local one for us, which is kind of nice. Um, it's really great when we get to work locally and don't have to travel as much. Um, it's also, our home church, which is also a cool story um, that we can talk about in another podcast. But this is in uh, Bradenton, Florida, so Manatee County down in Florida on the Gulf Coast, and we are at Bayside Community Church. Uh, it's a great church, been around um, over 20 years now, um, and large church, multiple locations. Right. Um, every, every one of their locations are a bit different. Some are larger than others. Some are newer buildings. Some are older buildings that they've taken over. Kind of mm-hmm. the same footprint that a lot of the uh, multi-site churches do. Right. This happens to be at their main broadcast location, mm-hmm. uh, which is in Lakewood Ranch, Florida, Brayton, Florida. Um, it's about how many seats? I think it's around 2,500. Yeah, 2,500 yeah, seat it's a room. big room. It's a big room. Feels big in there, big yep. open ceilings, yep. uh, raised seating in the back, big yep. ground area for seating, pretty large stage as well, um, and pretty high stage as well. It's just a big room. So right. anytime you're working in a big room, it just means bigger things and more things usually is when it comes to uh, um, AVL-related right. things. So in this one, um, we are going to be redoing uh, their video in the room. So they have a mixture right now of projector screens and LED panels. Right. And they have projector screens on the sides, LED panels in in the center stage. Yep. And they were dealing a lot with continuity between colors and latency between projectors and LED panels and a lot of different issues. Um, for people sitting in the in the seats watching right. and being a part of the the service, um, so it was time for an upgrade to kind of just um, work through that system and, and make it better in every way. The so. projectors are starting to go; they're yeah. kind of flickering a bit, and those are very expensive to to service. So those old Barco, it was like a twenty thousand lumen mm-hmm. Barco. They're still lamp projectors and yeah. not lamps that you can just buy online. So it's like right. you fly somebody in to come and and relamp the things twice a year and service them. Yeah, it was a headache. Um, the screens were getting a little bit of wear and tear on them. They just yeah. weren't looking right. I mean, over 10, over 10 years of use, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, about 10 years of use and a lot of use, not just like a service a week, you know. I mean, right. they're in here all the time doing all kinds of things, so tons of use. Um and they're trying to upgrade to have their, you know, the people that come in the room for service to have the best experience they can. And it was getting to a point where it was starting to become a little bit distracting right. um, between the two because of the issues they were having. So it's kind of how, kind of how all this started. Yeah. So we got a call from the Bayside team. I'm not sure who called us, but um, they first it was just looking at the side projectors because right. the side projectors they got they're on their way out. They're starting right. to flicker. We got to do something. Are we going to just invest more into these dying projectors? Or are we going to do something new? So right. over the years, we've seen the price of an LED wall come down and start to meet almost projection, de- depending on the size of screen, depending on the pixel pitch. But every year, these LED walls get more and more affordable. Um, and or the pixel pitch gets tighter right. for a cheaper price. Right. Um, yeah, before so, you could... this. 
a few, I mean, five, six, seven years ago, this wouldn't even be a conversation. Right, it's too it much. It would be too expensive. Right. And then what the panels you'd be getting would be, like you said, lower quality and pixel pitch would be very wide. And right. you wouldn't get the quality that you could get from a projector. So it wasn't, it's hard to make those decisions then. Now, they did have LEDs in right. the center of their stage, um, not by us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and the issue there was that they bought kind of no-name. Right. Just used, used, kind of which, straight from China right. LED panels. <laughs> which, I guess, for everyone listening, all these panels are built in China. Right. Uh, but still, not every panel is made equal. Right. And we've found that out. We've seen it. We've we've seen the uh, the nightmare situations with someone buying a no name or white labeling an off brand or bringing them over some dude selling LED wall, walls out of the back of their truck. We've seen it all. And what happens? A client gets a bad batch with maybe a bad component, some bad capacitors or something. Little by little, each one starts dying off. And then you go try and find that dude that sold it to, all these panels to you right. out of the back of his van. And what? Oh, you can't find him now? Yeah, I wonder why. Right. It's because he was selling out things out of the back of his truck. And then what? You're stuck with an inventory of LED walls that are hard to service, or you have to send them back to China to get serviced, or you have to find a third party. Yeah. And it's a headache. It's it's a nightmare. So we've decided as a company that we'd only uh, offer LED walls that we trust. Mm-hmm. If we if we trust them, then our client will trust them, right? Yeah, it's just not worth it's not worth the gamble really for us. We're always working with budgets. So we understand like the budget thing. Yeah. Um, but you gotta, you have to weigh that out, uh, especially on larger purchases. And some people do take the gamble and yeah. and it's been fine and they've, and they've been fine. So yep. there, there's those stories too. Um, but yeah, uh, you just don't want something to go wrong with a purchase like that. Right. And then be stuck with it. Right. So that's why we choose certain ones and we work with them. Right. So another thing too is that we, um, or, or the LED the LED panels that they did have, they didn't have enough to do what they wanted. Right. So the issue is you're, you're looking at center screen and you're looking at LED panels and they did have a few extra, but then you look at the side screens, which look completely different because they're projectors, right? right? So the thing was, okay, well, let's just change the sides to, to LEDs. So like you said a, a second ago, we went in with the with the idea of we're just replacing the side screens with new LED panels. So mm-hmm. we went, we started that process, we started looking into it, started designing, getting pricing, and then the conversation started to shift a bit um, with the staff at, at Bayside, with production, with Pastor, of, well, right now we're looking at something that's completely different. This, the center is different than the sides because we have LED panels and we have projectors on the sides, Right. So now all we're going to be doing is replacing the side screens with LED panels. Well, those are different than the center ones. Right. So the question is, is it going to look different? Is it going to, you know, act differently with the latency and the coloring and everything? Yeah, probably. Because right. what we found out, you know, over the past decade is, you know, LED panels are, you know, they're manufactured in batches. And so right. they can vary. Um, even if you buy the same panel and the same manufacturer, they can even vary from batch to batch. If you right. have two different manufacturers side by side, then you're going to see a difference 100%. for sure. Yeah. So then the conversation turned into, well, we don't want to just do the sides because that doesn't make any sense. It kind of puts us where we are now, you know, right. and it's still looking different. So then it turned into, well, why don't we do the center as well and try to do like a major rehab, yeah. which then all, which turned into a larger job, bigger discussions, you know, um, but that's where that's where it went, and so we were like, yeah. okay, let's do it, and right. let's get a little crazy with it, and we uh, we got creative and did some added actually a couple other screens as well. Yeah, in the design process. Yeah, you want to jump into it? Yeah, show it. it. All right, so let's let's look at the design real quick. So this is kind of some of the documentation that we kind of put together just so that everyone was on the same page of, of, as as far as power, uh, panel count, arrangement. Uh, so here's just a quick. I mean, this is like a sketchy rendering, but um, there's a floor plan shot. Um, here are all the circuits we had to do. Um, so this is a lot of a lot of power. A lot for of power. This. Yep. Here's a a line drawing of all the uh, the data drops and also all the power. 
I'm trying to get these are some custom panels. I'll go back through this here. Yeah. Okay, so that's what it. That was the final design. So the pink yep. screens are the side screens. Side screens. Yep. yep. And then we ended up adding the center. And then the portraits, the portrait screens, the teal ones or the aqua ones. Yep. Those were kind of what we threw in. So we do this a lot on projects. We'll we'll get the vision from the, the from the church or the client, and then we start drawing and putting our heads together because we're creative people too. We want to and and it's kind of just expanding the horizons. Like, hey, this looks great, but and then we start showing them renders like this. Yeah. So this was the rendering that um, that Keegan, uh, shout out Keegan, my yep. brother, who did, who's our designer. He put this together, rendered it out, it, and it's this is what it turned into. So when you, when you see the the pink the pictures of the project, this is what it was. But this is the idea. The idea was first off to get uh, the side screens, which are primarily used for iMag. Right. So camera shots are primarily on those side screens, which yep. is typical. Yep. But then in the center, you've got a large, long, forty something foot LED wall that is primarily graphics, lyrics. Um, d- different content, video mm-hmm. content. And then we added these portraits, which are like my favorite thing in this, in the LED world now, yep. uh, doing portrait iMeg, uh, essentially f- focusing on whoever's either speaking or leading a song or playing a solo or whatever's going on is typically on those portraits. And the portraits work in my eyes because we are portrait. We stand straight up. We're not, right. <clears throat> we're not landscape. I know 16.9 landscape is the typical video. You know, it's what we look at at a TV. And, but when you're talking real estate on stage, when you're talking LED panel count, right. when you're trying to get the best bang for your buck, you don't need everything beside a person. Right. You can just focus in. And another great feature of having a portrait IMAG wall is that uh, you can save that. Like you, you're, creating, you're creating content for that for that um, portrait wall. Right. But you can, you can record it to a, to a hard drive or whatever. And it's essentially like having pre-made content for online. Right. Obviously Instagram, everything is, is portrait. Everything's portrait. So now you are creating that content in real time while you switch and are able to use that online for whatever, which churches do typically. They, they love to put up videos of them playing songs or right. Or speak, uh, you know, the the pastor speaking or whatever's going on. Yeah, they also had an issue with. Um, I mean, imagine those side screens not being there, and you just see these big black holes in the stage. Right. And they they had an issue with that for a long time, and trying to fill it. And they used lights and set designs and stuff, you know, to try to fill those areas. Yep. Um, and so that was an idea too of well, we could just if we're doing this big of a project you know, why don't we throw another idea in there of doing these portrait screens and these voids and see right. what happens. Right. And that was from us. So yeah, that was a, that's a thing that we do all the time where we just kind of, you know, brainstorm and try to get creative and see if there's anything else and, and give, and we did other designs too. We did other drawings of, of this, you know, this room. Right. And eventually this is where it landed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the portraits made it in. They they look sweet too. Yeah, so I have some measure uh, some true measurements here. I think. So yeah, so the center wall is around forty six feet wide. It's a big wall. Um, the, about sixteen and a half feet tall, and then the sides were about what twenty feet wide, twenty little, something feet a little wide. Little over twenty. <clears throat> twenty one, I think. Yeah, thirteen feet tall around that. Yeah. Do you have a total t- uh, panel count? Yeah, it's just over five hundred panels. Five hundred. Um, it's a lot of panels. So it's like 507 or 517, something like that. Right. So we are also looking at what the pixel pitch should be. So these these screens are about 25, 30 feet from the front row, mm-hmm. would you say? Yeah. Also, because of the cameras, you know, we need to make sure that the pixel pitch was, was uh, tight enough where we weren't going to have any more issues. Right. So that the pixels were so numerous that the camera couldn't grab onto it and, and give that moray look. If right. you don't know what moray is, it's that funny, f- the, the flutter. You'll see a person, the person will look fine on camera, but then behind it, it looks like it's kind of waving or on fire. And really what's just happening there is the pixels on the camera sensor are trying to 
take video of the pixels of the LED wall right. and it can't do it. It's like, yeah, and it exactly. gets a little funky. And we, we always have to deal with that. We're dealing with that all the time, but typically we have to fix it with certain camera lenses and uh, depth of field yeah. stuff with like cinema cameras and everything. But in this scenario, we had all that going on, but we also had to find a pixel pitch and a panel that we trusted um, and, and see if we can get it on time. I mean, there's so many different factors. We right. had to get it on time. There's a, there's a timeline on this project. Oh, yeah. We haven't project. even got there, yeah. We haven't even... <laughs> what was the timeline? It was two months, two maybe. Two months. Which is very short for something like this. Um, it might have been a little more than two months. Maybe it was like 10 weeks or something like right. that. This hap- So this is a pretty fresh job. I mean, we just this just happened, I don't know, a month ago or so, yeah. six weeks ago when it opened. Um, but it was like right before Christmas when they uh, text when they called us and just started just started the conversation. Typically, um, post COVID, uh, it takes a lot longer to get stuff now, and we've been dealing sixty with that. to ninety days. We've been dealing that with 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 everything, right? Um, and like we like we said before, this stuff comes from China, so it's not just sitting in the United States. Right, it has to be brought over either on a shipping barge, which is takes a long time to go across the ocean. Um, or if you want to fly it, I mean, it's very expensive, but you can get it quicker. So we were dealing with time on this one for sure. There was a big event that uh, Bayside was going to have. They were hosting a, uh, the Relate Conference, which was a, it's a, a large conference. Um, people come from all over the country. Pastors come from all over the country to come here. I think it was like 1,600 um, different yeah, pastors and leadership pa- from around pastors the country. And different people there, yeah. So they wanted to have these new screens up by then which makes sense. And um, we agreed to make it happen. <laughs> and then after we agreed to make it happen, we had to make it happen. So that's kind of how, how it works. Typical <laughs> crown design group. Yeah. We say yes, and then we go make it happen. Yeah, so we had to find, well, we had to find enough panels because all this has to be from the same batch. Right. We had to pick up the right panel that had the right characteristics for the room and the great the right quality. So there's all these different... Uh, models right. of of panels that tout different different properties. Right. Some are for touring. Some right. are like really light and easy to throw up, and right. it's just like you know they're made for that. Yep. Typically more expensive. <clears throat> They'll have like big magnets on it so that you can pop them up in place, and, right. just and it makes it really easy for like set up and tear down every single night, every single night. Right. Uh, the this was going to be installed once. And probably changed around maybe every year, maybe yeah. once a year. I mean, it up in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so we had to find the right panel. We had to f- make sure that we could get them extremely expedited. Yeah. The only way this happened was because um, uh, the panels we used were Absin. I don't even know if we said that. But Absin is what we went with, the manufacturer. Absin. Yeah. And they, um, these panels were already built. So, you probably don't know if you order an LED wall uh, from us for sure because we get them direct from the manufacturer. Most of the time, the panels aren't even built yet. Yeah, they're so, made to order. Yeah, we put in an order, and then that's that's how you know your batch is all the same. And so that takes time. I mean, to actually manufacture and put these things together, it's it's weeks and weeks and weeks of manufacturing. Right. And then it's weeks, a couple weeks, two, three weeks of on a barge to get over here. And then they sit in a shipping container at the port mm-hmm. and it's got to go through customs and right. gets finally on a truck. And then that takes over a week. And so there's all, that's what's going through my brain when we're saying, yes, we're doing this somehow right. in, you know, two, two months or whatever, especially a job this big. So it was immediately like, okay, let's go see what they have. And is what they have something that, fits for the Bayside project. Right. So if it doesn't, then we have to go back to them and say, I don't know if we can make it in time or we got to try something else or whatever. Right. Yeah. So luckily they did this panel. They had, they had it, they had it uh, already made, uh, which saved us weeks and weeks of manufacturing time. Right. Um, it was still a, a huge push to like get these things into crates right. and get them shipped and get them over here. Yeah. Um, so, so we've done a lot of projects with Absin. Yep. Absin, they're a Chinese company. Um, they're one of the biggest yep. LED wall comp- LED panel companies in the world. I yep. think they're owned by one of the biggest companies in China. Yeah. I, I can't keep up, but I don't know. You get I could Google saying. it real quick, but um, <laughs> you know, they're a big company. Google it at home, people. <laughs> um, but why do we like Absin is 
is they, they do make a great product. I know they kind of build a lot of panels for a lot of different companies, but they have uh, a pretty good presence in the U.S. They mm-hmm. have a brick and mortar and a place in Orlando here really close to us. So any repairs and 100% there's repairs. If, if you ever buy an LED wall, yeah. it's going to need repair right away. The second we install these things, we burn it in, meaning we just let it sit there on for days. And eventually one of the millions and millions and millions of solders right. <laughs> uh, break or pop or whatever. Right. And you'll get a pixel out or you'll get a line out or a module out. And they're kind of made for that. These LED panels are made to quickly swap out modules. And they right. give you, every time we sell a wall, uh, we sell extra parts, like a couple percent extra parts, extra modules, extra cables, extra control boards, all that stuff, because it's going to happen. Yeah. No matter what, it's just part of the gig. Yeah, maintenance is a big, just part of owning one. It's just part of it. For sure. But because Abstin have you know a brick and mortar here in Orlando, when you pop, you know, a, a pixel goes bad, pop out a module, you have this group of bad modules... Ship them to Orlando. They fix them for you. It's under warranty. Yep. Send them back to you. You put them up. You're you're back, and then all those other ones, you know, or you have them all as extras, I guess. Right, spares, again. Yeah. right, spares again. So we've we've used them a lot. We've done um, really awesome projects with them over the years. Mm-hmm. They've been fun to work with. Uh, they're helpful. They're always available. Yep. Um, smiles, awesome. So oh. we always talk about smile. Smiles <laughs> are our main contact. Uh, Gives the best hugs in the AVL game. I'll t- tell you that. <laughs> but shout out, smile, love you, dude. Um, but their whole team has been was helpful on this. We we went through all this because we have to also look at mapping. We have to look at at uh, everything in between yeah. power, data drops, how to do it. Um, yeah, it's it's great to have a company in your back pocket to help with with yeah. things that are willing to step up and help and yeah. work with the designs and, um, and help you, you know, get the order in time and be willing to right. make it happen and push to make it happen. And, um, so absent has been that for us, even on smaller jobs, it's not like, because this was a huge job. I mean, obviously everyone wanted the job to happen. Um, but, they've been helpful on, on smaller jobs too. Right. The same way if we had an issue, you know, they're, they're very helpful. Yeah. And that probably does have a lot to do with them having a pretty big presence in the United States and having an office and everything here. I mean, right. Well, teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah. I mean, we've been doing these walls forever, but you know, we're, we are using a new processor on this one, which we'll get into. Yeah. Um, we're probably the first install in the States with this processor. So yeah, we're, we're treading into new waters. Yeah. And they were very helpful putting it together. But all right, so one of the big issues here with this project too, so it, you know, there's layers upon layers of issues or like um, priorities that the client will have. So first, the priority for this project was just we we want to get rid of the projectors. Okay, right. well that's done. Second was oh we want all the panels to look the same across the whole room. Well, obviously then we're gonna have to do new panels. So right. they're all in the same batch. They're all the same manufacturer. They're all the same model, and they all look the same. Right. Then it was well, how much latency is there gonna be? So this was the big one. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, latency is the amount of time that it takes for an image to go through a camera lens, through the camera sensor. Be put through a cable, through a video switcher, through a router, through a processor, and then up on the screen. So essentially, a camera to the screen, how much time does it take all that information to get there? And that's what we call the this latency. Meaning that a pastor or whoever is standing on stage in the room and he decides to do something funny or make a big jet like a big motion. Say he claps. Yep. Right? So if you're watching the screen and you're watching him on this on the stage at the same time and he claps and then a half a second later you see him clap on the screen. Yeah. That's very distracting and not a great look. You might have you might see it at like big concerts and stuff. Yeah. Um, where they just they throw these walls up really quickly and every and everything just has to happen for the for the live show. And yeah. you might see kind of a delay. Latency is like I mean you can think of it's it like the delay. a delay. Yeah. It's the delay between a person on stage doing something and then in the background right behind them on a large <laughs> massive screen going like it this happens. a little bit behind and you know 
if you're sitting in line of a person and the screen, it just drives you crazy. Yeah. Now there's always latency. Yeah. If if there's if you it. ever if you ever read anything anywhere and it says zero latency, uh, what they really mean is almost zero latency. Right. <laughs> uh, if you want to get really technical, we you are only ever seeing things after it happened. It <laughs> takes time for light for protons or whatever to hit your eyes from what you're looking at. There's latency there. And there's definitely latency when it goes through electronics, right. through cameras, through switchers. And it's a big deal. It, it doesn't, it, it's something to keep in mind w- when you have these live venues with iMag. Yeah. Um, well, this was a big thing for, ba- for this job. Like, yeah. yes, they wanted things to look the same, but they were dealing with latency issues with the, with the items that they had already. And right. so they not only did they have things that were mismatched, um, you know, over the over the last decade of just putting stuff in there and making it happen, right? They had latency issues as well. So this was a very big sticking point with the leadership at the church and the production guys of we have to make this the best it can be as far as latency goes. Now, obviously, we can't get it to zero, like you said, okay. but we went down the road of how fast can we make this? Right? How many? How, you know, how many milliseconds can we save, right. <laughs> you know, on, on everything? How many right. frames can we save? How many frames? So we did some experiments, I think, that we want to Yeah, this is a pic- Yeah, this is a picture of us on site. So this is before the install. Um, what you're seeing here is a picture of my laptop, and it's playing time code. So it's just on a YouTube channel playing time code. Laptop's at the bottom. The time Laptop's at the, at the bottom. Up there at the top is their old LED wall that was hanging on, on screen. And what we've done here is we've taken the camera, which is at the back of the room and we focus in on my laptop. So my laptop is the zero frame, the zero second frame, meaning it is the reference. So we watch the time code on my computer through a camera, through a switcher, through a router, through a processor, and then up to their old led wall. And what we see is you take a picture and you can see the difference in time. Um, I'm not smart enough with math to figure this out right now. Do well, you remember? This yeah, was, I can this do was, it. So, yeah, so that's about, you know, the last two numbers are your frames, right? The frames per second. So right. it should be, they're probably shooting 30. Yeah, this is what 30. it was. So we're at 26 up there and five there. So there's four on the top and five at the bottom. So we're at nine frames. That's nine frames difference from camera to yeah. LED wall for, for us seeing it. Right. Which and is a lot. It might not seem like a lot, but that's, that's a good chunk of time. When you have an, when you have a, a pastor and then the image of the pastor behind them and they're doing something, it's distracting. So if you see it, not to get too nerdy on the math, but if it's 30, 30 frames a second, so we're at nine frames, it's almost a third. So it's almost a third of a second. Like it's that much time difference, which it isn't isn't much, but seven hundred and fifty milliseconds. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, I don't know that. I'm even. But yeah, it's it's. So we went down the road of all right. How many frames can we shave off of this? How how can we get this faster? Now, like we said before, LED walls uh, were notorious for being slower than projectors. They couldn't mm-hmm. process the information fast enough and spit it out right. to make sense. So the latency would be would be pretty rough when you saw it. Right. Um, and so nowadays they have sped them way up. They're a lot faster, but yep. it depends on what you buy. Yep. And the most important thing would probably be the processor that you have in line to, to do the processing and spit it out to the panels. Some latency is like you can't get away from. Right. So the processing inside of a camera to make it like photons to electrical image, right. that takes time. Right. It's quick, but it's still there. Even when you gen lock a camera, which everything here for nine frames was gen locked, meaning right. we had a reference. We have a, a, a clock reference going to every piece of gear in the chain. We had sync or gen lock going to the cameras. We had gen lock going to the switcher, gen lock going to the router, gen lock going to their graphics machine, mm. and then gen lock going to their processor. So this is best case scenario with all their equipment in line. But... Um, there's stuff that you can't get away from. The camera you can't get away from. Right. Uh, any transmission, if you do extra transmission between the camera and and the equipment, whether it's a converter, 
every time you convert something, you scale something, you have you have a converter scaler in line to change it from 1080p60 to 1080i, whatever. Right. That adds a frame. Right. Um, the switcher itself adds a frame, right. and that's uh, well. I mean, you can get away from that if everything's gen locked, but typically inside of your switcher, the processing inside the switcher, even when it's frame synced, adds some time to it. Yeah. And then going through the processor and all that stuff is is more is more time. So nine frames was added up in this scenario and the projectors are the same. They're around that. And we, yeah. we, we tried a couple different things. We even like took pieces of equipment out. We went like straight from camera to the processor. We went straight from the camera through the router to the pro like we yeah. tried to, to count up all these, these. We were finding out what was, what was eating up the frames. What was eating up the frames. Yeah. And we could find it. I mean, we, we found could go couple. straight to the projector or whatever and be like, oh, we just dropped three frames. So, okay, <sighs> what was in line before that? Right. Well, that's what was eating those frames up. Yeah. So this became a big discussion, and it was, it was made very clear, hey, if we're going to do this project, this huge thing, this big overhaul, mm-hmm. um, the latency has to be as good as it can be. Right. So that went into the discussions with, with the client of making sure everyone understood, you know, what we just talked about. Hey, there's going to be latency at some point, but um, we'll do what we can do to, to make it the best we could. So that's where we started going down that road. And that's when we ran into this new processor. What was it? That, the, yeah. What's it called? Or the MX 6000. Novastar we, MX 6000. Yep. It's yeah. their new line and um, chassis based, chassis based, card based uh, on the back. Um, so you can you can a la carte choose your inputs input, inputs cards and your well outputs are only fiber, only fiber. So this outputs. was a new thing too. But so we wanted as fast and yeah, as, you know, we got we got in contact with Nova Star directly. Yeah. Apps and helped us out with that. Cause, yeah, and we had conversations and. It was like, oh, all right, let's try this processor. Let's try this one. Let's do this one. We were putting quotes together with them. Then they're like, oh, we're changing it. Let's do this. Well, then this conversation came up of, well, we have this new processor. And it's not really even out. Like, the software's in beta. Like, it's just... Which it still is. It's, it's Well, yeah, it still is. <laughs> Hopefully soon. We're still um, waiting on some features. <laughs> so then we had to have the conversation of with the church of there's this new processor. You guys would probably be one of the first people to really even use it. Do you want to, do you want to take a risk? (laughs) But (laughs) what it means is they say it's fast. What they're claiming is, you know, basically a frame in that, in that processor, which is nuts for the amount of processing that's going on. So that's way less than, than other ones. Right. Um, And so we went down that road and, Everyone was on board with it and okay because Novastar is also a huge company and they kind of run the game in, in this control um, for LED walls. You probably, if you have an LED wall, you probably have a Novastar wall unless you have something called Brompton, which is just a different level. But um, so we decided to go with this new processor and kind of take a shot and believe that it was as fast as they said it was. And um, we loaded up with a bunch of cards, a bunch of different inputs that they liked and wanted, um, all super, you know, high speed inputs, and then right, um, yeah, we did we did some SDI inputs, some some twelve G SDI. Yep, we did some um, high performance HDMI. I forget what number it is. Yep, and then was it two point one or something? Or two, I can't remember. Two point two. I can't remember. Both two, up to a trillion <laughs> pixels at uh, whatever it is, and then Display ports. Display port ones. Um, the outputs are what well, uh, the outputs are kind of uh, are a new thing for us too with this processor. Um, it's fiber outputs only, so fiber cards. So we put in a, a fiber patch bay. Yep. Um, then we just we essentially ran fiber from these output panels to fiber distros, and at the and at each wall essentially was an, a fiber distro, right? That which broke out into cat cables. That broke out to cat. So typically, when you're setting up an LED wall, you probably have Cat five or Cat six, whatever cables running from your controller right. to your directly to your panels, right. which is how everything works. This is the new fiber runs and save time and frames, hopefully. And yep, it didn't make it easier too. We weren't running because there was a whole lot of home runs. We had to run, had to run a crazy amount of Cat cable for, yeah, for these tons. walls. Instead, we ran 
like seven fiber cables, I think, which right. is we which is even like more than what we needed. <laughs> right. We just did extra. Made it clean though. Yeah, it did. It made it really clean. Um, so well, let's get into some of this install. I've got some pictures from the install. Yeah. Anyway. So here we have the wall just going up. So we had two weeks to do this, which is actually more than usual. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, well, working with churches, we only usually get a week because Sunday comes every every weekend. We kind of yeah. So technically, we only had a week to do like the actual. Pan, the swap of the panels, right? But we took advantage of an extra week before to go in and do all the rigging, all the rigging and the cable pulls, yep. anything we could possibly do to save time on the install week. Um, right. We did that in the first the first week, which is still that goes into the time the yeah. time the time <laughs> line of this job, which was very fast to make happen and then very fast to actually install. Right. So we procured all the. Uh, all the chain hoist, um, trussing, uh, motors. We we, we, we put did, some new motors in there for them. Yeah, we did electric motors. Electric motors. They had some motors that we used again. Um, they had those looked at right before we put them up. We had them so all, yep. Everything was they were recertified. recertified and certified. Yeah, so and it was, certified, it was, it was perfect know. timing. We, we, yeah. we did it all. It was great timing on all that stuff. Yep. Um, so here we have we have a truss going up. Or right, here's a truss. This is a sidewall, so we had four pick points, um, and it's all going up to structure above. And you can just see they just put one of the uh, one of the panel uh, rows in there. Um, let me see here. Yeah, so that's how we rigged these. Um, we flew some fifth cord truss. Um, the side panels or the side screens were. Uh, a single piece of truss. It was a big piece of truss. It's like 24 feet long. Yeah. Um, this is all the, all their, uh, their, tr their truss down from the ceiling. They had existing light trussing. So that was another thing. While we were installing LED lighting. wall, the church staff was there reworking their whole lighting system at the same time. Yep. Um, which just took coordination between the two of us and everybody kind of working together and shout, trying to stay out of each other's way. Shout out to Bay Pro. There we go. <laughs> They had a crazy thing happen while they were doing the lighting. Yeah. Uh, one bad power cable. Who knows how? I don't know. But it had a swapped. It had a swapped hot and ground, which is worst case scenario. It's the one you can't do. <laughs> and they had a line of how many fixtures? Probably like uh -huh. ten. I think like ten movers, ten, yeah. different types of fixtures, and somehow a bad cable got in the mix, and they plugged it in, and it popped every single fixture down the line. And either messed up their control boards or their they, yeah. they check the fuses, but nightmare. Yeah. Nightmare. How does it I mean, how'd that even happen? I mean, that stuff just happens. It's the devil. <laughs> Demons in the gables. gables. So here's the here's a, the back of the panel. So these are nice. These are the ab so what Absin PL PL two point five version two. PL pro PL sorry, I had this um PL 2.5 plus version two. Um, these are a newer panel. These are great. Um, they looked amazing. Yeah. They have the new kind of ratchet system on the, on the connectors, which was really right. nice. Yeah. Um, all the guys were like, Oh, these go up so easy. They're so, they're so nice to put up. It which was typically is not what we hear from our guys. <laughs> yeah. And when you, I mean, if you put an led wall up before or you haven't, when you do, you run into things not fitting. I mean, the, the minute measurements of these things have to be so unbelievably perfect for them to go together. The tolerances are Yeah, ridiculous. it's insane. It has to be. And so if it's... That's why, that's why we have, that's why we have uh, s special um, structural trussing that right. doesn't bend or bow right. very much. Right. We, have to, we put in... Um, turnbuckles. Turnbuckles so everywhere. We so we can adjust everything by the minute little movement right. to keep everything flat, to keep everything square. Right. Because it's like every every time you if you're a little off at the top, you don't even know until you're at the bottom. Oh yeah, and then you're and then you're off by a half inch. You're like, well, what the heck? Yeah, there's and it's no because way. <laughs> some and as you're putting more weight on that trussing, it's it's starting to right. to to bow a bit. I yeah. mean, it just it's physically right. what it's it going to do. But but these these went these up went up really nice. great. Yeah, especially for the size of the wall. I mean, these were big walls. Even the side screens are big walls. The yeah. center one obviously is really big. Right. So they still went up great. Um, the magnets are super strong on them as well. 
Um, so they really grabbed on when you when you threw them up there. Yeah. Um, Is there a team putting them up? This is one of our oh, <laughs> this is one of our newbies. Yeah, but man, uh, doing that's all how the, the LEDs come. Just so you guys know, every yeah. single one of them are in its own little box. So you can get either wood wood crates if it's is it cheaper to do that? Yeah, it's ch- typically cheaper just to get wood, wood crates, shipping crates, wood yeah. shipping crates, and or you can get road cases. Road cases. So if you get road cases, they'll still be in a plastic bag with like a plastic cover on inside that. the road case. inside the road case, right. but. Otherwise, you get a, a wooden crate like you see on that picture in the back. And then in each one of those are six or eight, I can't remember, individual boxes that you have to take out, open up, pull the panel out. It's in a bag. you got to cut the bag, take the panel out, take right. the cover off. So that times over 500, you know, in the backstage area, it got nuts. We did, I think we had three giant uh, dumpsters worth of trash. I mean, it was... Yeah, that's coordination there Pretty too. Insane. Oh yeah, that doesn't just happen. So they had all those all those crates yeah, in in their on back, that back room. backstage. They were stacked. They were stacked high. I, s- I found some pictures of uh of Luke on a I know. I sent you on the video. on the scissor <laughs> on the we're on the uh, the forklift. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm not going to show that. OSHA is going to be all over us. <laughs> no. When I was there, I was like, all right. So Luke is actually certified to run a forklift. Oh, there you go. And see, it's because he was with the Coast Guard for a while before he worked with us. That's true. And it was during COVID and he had to like load a forklift at a, at a center for like food or something. So I was like, all right, you're on the forklift. American hero. Just doing. Luke is usually the, the, Oops. you know, on a computer somewhere, um, commissioning stuff. But I was like, Hey man, you got to go run the forklift. Right. <laughs> so here we have, uh, uh, young Matthew, um, Padawan. This is all he did was manage boxes and <laughs> cases of LEDs. Yeah. For- for four days. For four days. While the, the rest of the crew put them up or did whatever, wired them in. Yeah. Uh, but that's just a, just, you know, keep that in mind out there. Hey. You're going to have a whole lot of trash. You're going to have a whole lot of uh, boxes and all that stuff. Yeah. So this is them uh, putting it up. So we had a really great game plan. Uh, none of this just happened. You can't wing it. You can't just show up and just start throwing LED walls up. Right. You have to have a plan. Right. Every data path. Uh, there's there's um, restrictions or there's limits to the amount of panels that you can put on a single data run. Yeah. Data run. So we have to work all that out ahead of time. And power run. And power. So both power and data are are they have maximum lengths. Right. Maximum panel counts. Right. So none of this just happens. We pre-design it, and our crew knows how many and the and the the line of of uh of data, like the path is going to take through the whole wall. Right. So it goes up and down, up does and down, it go up and stops. Down, does and it go left and right? Yeah, does it, it could go either way. You know. um, so because we had that plan, they were able to, as they put up the, each panel, they knew which direction the data was going to go. They knew which direction the power was going to go. And they were able to, to cable while they cable as we went. Yeah. Right. So that's uh, David and Keegan. That's David uh, praying over the LED wall. <laughs> uh, we pray over L- every LED wall that we winced. Uh, actually, that's a funny picture. We kind of do, but I don't think he's praying there. So this is after we had them all up. And um, what you can see here, oop, what you can see here is some of the mapping that we're doing. So at this point, well, I, I guess a couple of th- other things that happened at this point. We had to get uh, a new electrical panel put in. There's a, t- I mean, it was this like was a, a lot of power. Yeah, 400 amps of this LED lot of power. wire. Yeah. So that's something that people don't understand either. Is and they typically go, "Well, I thought it was LED. Why do you need all this power?" And we see that all the time on these projects where we we're putting an LED wall and we have to put a, you know, yeah, we need twenty yeah. something, two hundred eight volt circuits. Right. And these electricians never know what that's for. <laughs> right. They're like, what? Why would you need that much? I well, thought they're LED. Can't, aren't they yeah. low consumption? Well, they're way lower than a discharge you know, yeah. fixture, but that's a lot of light. And, and that's adds, a lot of it electronics. Adds it adds up. I mean, 500 panels, doesn't matter if those right. are low voltage or not. I mean, so yeah, we did. And that's something to keep in mind, too, on your budget. 
I mean, that's, that's looked over a lot. So you might, you know, we, we go into that when we're putting quotes together, designs or whatever, we always put in a line item for estimated electrical costs or whatever, just so you have it. Right. Yeah. This was a chunk of the budget to come in and basically put in a, a lot of electrical, Yep. which is great. They needed it to do something like this, to do it right. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's great that it happened. Um, but yeah, that was a whole nother coordination um, with this whole job. Yeah, we had. Uh, let me see. Do you know David's? Uh, kind of, uh, oh yeah, Sun- Sunrift, Sunrift. Sunrift Electric. Yeah. Shout out Sunrift Electric, David. Thank you for your help on this project. Yeah, it's great. Uh, if y'all are looking for a um, a great electrician, yeah. we've kind of worked with him on a couple projects. Yeah. He's been great. He's he's fun. Um, did a great job on this. So he. He had to essentially install this uh, a brand new Lintec panel. Uh, Lintec panels are uh, they have relay or relay breakers, meaning right. elect- electrically electronically we can control the breakers. So we send a network cable to it, and then we can control it and say like, all right, turn off breakers one through forty. This is so they can turn power off to the panels during the week. That's right. Like if they don't need to be on, then you might as well not have power going to them. Yeah. If it's possible. I mean, that is an expense. It's a bit of a luxury. I, I mean, it's great. I love it. It, it. it helps the longevity of your equipment too. Yeah. Um, but instead of sending a guy up to your power, your electrical room and flipping breakers, right? <laughs> you can get something like a Lintec panel and yep. just push a button. We just program it yeah. and call it a day. Um, so what David had to do was uh, install that panel, run all the branch circuits, up to we did some custom panels yeah. that had uh, custom twist lock twist lock out, outputs mm-hmm. and then it also had fiber outputs yep. everything labeled per circuit per per location uh, per panel everything was kind of pre noted we we knew what we were, what we were doing ahead of time right um, plan came together and now they have all that power in strategic locations across their ceiling, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we had to get all that power to all these locations with the fiber, with all the communication as well. Yep. And then build looms, custom power looms, custom fiber looms. Yep. That drop from the panels down to the trussing. Yep. That feed the walls. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So once they're all up, then you get something that looks like this. So this is, this is, all of the walls up. I see a camera on the portraits right now, but I'm just going through whatever I find here. Yeah. Uh, but essentially what we're doing here is now mapping the video across every screen. And in this scenario, we have that new processor, the MX6000, 6000. which can handle every single pixel from house left screen to house right screen, everything in between. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Typically, if we have isolated different screens, we would usually we do multiple processors. And so like a processor per screen. And it makes it a little bit cleaner because we know what you're sending there. You know, it's just it's an output off the router going to it and we send it whatever we want. In this scenario, we wanted that new processor and the speed and having everything inside of one processor to map across every single screen. Yep which is awesome. And so it was all pixel mapped. It was all, uh, there's a couple of picture in pictures inside of it. So you could, with all those different input cards on that MX 6000, you could send all these different sources and then inside the program, move it around. Right. So right here, we're just looking at, at, um, some shapes to help us map accordingly, pixel accurate, um, to make sure that our, mapping is correct and our images will go where we want them to. Right. Let me see here. So this is, uh, this is Matt stuff working with their crew. Um, and this is there. He, I think he's working on the hippo there. So he has a graphics machine that's pushing graphics and that's, that was a, that was a new signal flow for them. Yep. They were, sending video through their hippo at one point before. And that was actually a, a main a source of chink in the armor. Yeah. That <laughs> was a main source of latency. 
was yeah. running their program iMeg video through the That's hippo. That's something we found when we were doing that testing we talked about before yeah. as we were bypassing things and we were understanding that that hippo was pretty heavy for video processing. Yeah. Um, just running graphics from it, fine. But pushing video through it, creating content that way to go out to their current system was eating up a lot of frames. Right. So we did not want to do that in this scenario. So we took the hippo out of the signal path and right. simply made it a source. So the hippo outputs a display port, a 4K display port output. Yep. And that hits one of the display port cards on the processor. Yep. And now you can map that anywhere. So that's a 4K image that we can push. So if they create content that's 4K, they have they have videos, they have um, moving backgrounds, they have you yeah. know, whatever this, they have. This was important too because we don't want to just come in and throw everything away. You know, if they have equipment and gear that's working, uh, then we should try to reuse it right. somehow. And it would have been easy to just to say, well, the hippo is causing you to lose like four frames in your signal. We should just get rid of it and do something else. I don't um, think it was that much, but... Yeah, I mean, it was, whatever it was. It wasn't helping anything. Yeah, so instead it was like, all right, how else could we use the hippo then? And instead of, instead of you know, being wasteful, you know, we're, we don't want to be that. So it turned into this idea of let's just make it be the graphics machine, basically. And it worked out really well, and it does a really good job for what it's doing. Uh, except, that it didn't, except that it didn't work at first. It, it works... It's worked out now, but yeah, <laughs> the week of install. The week of install, uh, only half the wall we show correctly. Yeah. And we're going, what is going wrong here? And this is a, something that we deal with when we're messing with, uh, when we have we processors come in and, we're, and we're dealing with equipment that's already existing on a, on a project. Mm -hmm. So we didn't, we had nothing to do with that hippo. Yeah, we didn't like, even We don't even tool. know what it is. We, did, we, had, we hadn't sold it to them. We don't serve, like whatever. We didn't know what it was. But we want to help them figure it out because right. it's part of this project. So that that was a that was something that came up during the week of, oh crap, we're like in this now, and we got to right. figure out the hippo. I, I remember trying. I'm like online trying to find like the hippo guy, and calling them and right. trying to get you know help with with tech support and everything. Um, Matt stuff. Matt stuff it out. went deep. <laughs> Matt went stuff, deep. who's one of our one of our designers, one of our installers. He's He's a longtime crown crown designer. Yeah, um, love him. Uh, he went deep into that hippo, and here's the issue that we found. Yeah, off of the graphics cards inside of the hippo, they have small um, cables just from that from that uh, graphics card, from the card to the cha the chassis card, right? The interface card. And we were pushing DisplayPort 2.1 or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And those little adapter cables inside the Hippo were not certified for that amount of bandwidth. Right. <laughs> and we had, there was two of them. And they, we were getting different things from each. Right. And different timing as well. It was very weird. And so strange. You can imagine the path we went down to try to, because we're literally that's your opening it up. Right. And it's, uh, yeah, if yeah. you're taking the physical thing apart, you are we have already been through the ringer on this thing and spent, you know, a couple of days of <laughs> yeah. technical support and calls. And uh, it was, just, it was frustrating and it wasn't our piece of gear. Forever. And then, yeah, an old piece of gear that we didn't sell them. And right. you know, that's just, it just comes with the territory sometimes with this stuff, but Matt figured it out. Yeah. Ordered a couple new little adapter cables for inside the, the unit. Yep. And voila, it worked. Yeah. So he's there. So here's a picture of Matt working on that. Um, he was also uh, another feature that they wanted was to be able to move screens around inside that processor. Mm -hmm. So they this processor comes with a great software where you can kind of pixel map and move things around, move your images around. Eventually, hopefully, the software comes out and they're able to change that mapping on the fly. So we're waiting for that. We're right. waiting for those um, scenes. Right. To be, yeah, they can do it right now. They right. can save scenes, but they really want to be able to um, change scenes on the fly. Right. So I think that's coming out soon, right? That's what that email. I would is. assume that's what that was. Yeah. That firmware and software update is. Okay. So here's another look at the mapping 
you can kind of get an idea here. This is mapped from left to right. So essentially, you could have a bouncing ball bounce from house left screen down to the portraits, and you could do a full, you could do a single video yeah. that plays across this whole thing. That's pretty sweet. I forget what the resolution is. Do you ever? Oh, do you ever figure out what the? I did. Um, don't worry about it. Yeah, I can't. Remember. A lot of it's, pixels. Yeah, a lot of pixels from it's, left to right. It's way over four K. <laughs> yep. Um. um Here's a time lapse. You want to see a time lapse? Yeah, let's do it. We did a time lapse. Maybe I'll pause it at first, and we can take a look at. Um, oh, I tried. Tried to pause it. <laughs> so this is. There's those the are before. the projector screens on the sides. So visually, just in the room, those are big, giant white squares that you always saw. Yep. I mean, that's a big aesthetic thing in the room. Right. Um, so that was that was just a big change overall just physically in the room, all of a sudden those giant white squares were gone. Yep. And they didn't look good. It's just, it was just too much time on them. And yeah, just, they, just it, yeah, it was time. Yeah. So this was the, this was the last week. So this is the second week of install. Yep. Like Monday morning type thing. The church is on stage, taking down all their lighting. Um, the, the old led walls down already, but let's take a look. Oh, there we go. There we go pulling the screens on. You can see them on the on the there seats they go. down there. Up They're big. Up and up and up. Center wall up and up and up. And then I think this is a period of five days. Five days. Yeah. Get rid of those screens. It's more trusting. We're doing all this cabling up on top. They have a sky sky grid. I think they call it. Yeah. Um, so you can walk around above the stage. There you can see us turning them on for the first time. It's always great when yep. you can Doing some turn them on and see them working. Looking at graphics. Yeah. A lot of movement. Yeah. A lot of moving pieces there to make this thing happen in a matter of four or five days in between services. Yep. For sure. I think at one point you can actually see the issue that we're having with that hippo. I think it, you see it on the center. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> you see it? Yeah. There yeah, it is again. See, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was like two so different that, outputs because it was pushing, I think, was it pushing two 4K outputs? Is that what it was doing? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's. But that was late in the, I mean, that was like day four and we were still having that issue. I know. With that it, center it wall and the hippo. It was annoying. Um, Boom. Yeah. So let's look at some uh, some stuff here. So this is it. This is after it's, this is the first weekend, I believe. Um, you can see how they're using it here. They have a couple different programs going. They have a main program for iMeg on the, on the, the left and the right screens. Then they have a separate, a separate mix for the portraits with a separate key with the lyrics. So the lyrics are higher. Right. Obviously, on the sides, you have the lyrics at the bottom of the screen. And then on the portraits, you have them on the upper part of the screen, which makes sense. And then the center, you can see the LED wall graphics. And this one was cool. Um, yeah, I like that. There's Jordan. Yep. You can see what they're doing with the graphics there, yeah. like on that portrait screen. Obviously, this was very spiritual. Message <laughs> about football. Bucks, refs, and saints. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the impression I got when you look at the contrast was great on the on the panels. Like the blacks were very dark. Very nice. Uh, um, the refresh rate and everything went well. Yep. Looked good. Moray was minimum. Yep. Uh, it, the colors were great. Yep. The, the pixel depth was great. Like it looked like a banner. It looked like a painting. Yeah, it looked like a like a scrim or something yeah like a big graphic that they had printed and hung there right um it looks it looked it looked legit that's a that's a, a wider shot yeah. yeah that's a great shot there yeah so that's uh this is in the control room or in the production suite whatever you want to call it yeah. but that's jasmine shout out jasmine she's the uh video director she oversees the team there. Um, 
the video team, the camera ops, the engineers, the graphics, all that. And she's on a Ross. Um, she's running this Carbonite and an Altrix. Uh, she's got a 3ME um, panel there. And they have another one uh, for a broadcast mix. We'll, we can probably go through their whole video system at some point. We mm. did we did their cameras yeah, yeah. and their their video upgrades, and I love I love their setup. Mm. So maybe we'll do another episode of that. Yeah. But this brings up some of the different mixes. So because they have all those different screens, they are running multiple MEs, video mixes. Right. I think they're running an ME for program, which kind of goes to the side sides. An ME for the portraits, I think two mini Emmys for the center graphics, hmm. and then an, I think another Emmy for their actual online video, I think. Hmm. I, might, I may have gotten that wrong. Just pretend I'm right. Yeah. But what we, ha- what, we, what we did here with Jasmine was these Ross consoles are extremely capable, and we just program macros. Mm-hmm. Essentially, what we do is we say, when I'm switching between all my cameras for my iMag screens on the sides, I want the jib shot. I want the dolly shot. I want cam three and cam four. I want all these different shots and pop, 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 cutting through them. But for those portrait shots, I don't want the jib. It right. feels weird. The jib is a big, wide shot. Right. It's it's disconnecting. It's right. great for online. Jibs are great for online because you get to see the whole church. You get to see, feel like you're there. You see the congregation. Like you're kind of, you know, you're watching at home online. You might as well feel like you're there a bit. So right. you see, you see the room, you see the people. But when you're in the room and you're looking at those portrait screens, you want to see a person. You're trying to connect with someone. You're trying to connect with a worship leader or a, or a pastor speaking. So we set up these macros on the switcher every time for online, they hit the jib. It did not go to the jib for the portraits. Right. And so we just send camera, whatever, whatever their camera numbers are center tight or whatever. And so it makes it really easy. So she's running all those mixes from one, from one switcher and she's just going click, click, click. And kind of, she's keeping her, she's keeping her, her main program in mind and she knows that certain cameras are not going to go to those portraits right. or the center screen, obviously. Which helped. I mean, that's a lot to throw on a staff or, or anybody to come in and do like a huge overhaul like that. Right. And then now your whole flow is completely different. Right. Your entire switching flow, everything's different for you. And you got to think through and it's opening weekend and you don't want to everyone's looking at the new stuff and you don't want to put the wrong thing up. And so, yeah, shout out to them yeah, to Bayside, their crew and, and for, you know, going with the flow and, and making it happen. It's a growing, I mean, now they grow into this thing. Right. And it's like, Oh, what else could we do with those portraits? You know, it's, so many capabilities, it was, so much uh, creative solutions that you can do with this. It's like having yeah. a brand new canvas to paint on. And I think they'll get it. They're probably getting into that kind of stuff now. I bet. Right. So, Early on, it was like, we just have to get through service and not <laughs> completely screw it up. It's a brand new flow, a yeah. brand new, it's a brand new setup. It's, yeah. Everything's different. Yeah. And we, we wanted to help as much as we could with that. That's why we did the macros and stuff. Cause we wanted to go well too right. on the service. We want, you know, we wanted to go well. And yep. now it's probably getting more into like the creative, uh, the creativeness of it of, Hey, what else could we actually do with this stuff now that we're starting to really learn and understand how it's all flows and they're getting more comfortable with it. So mm-hmm. yeah, sky's the limit on, on this stuff. Yeah. It looked really good in the room. It fits really well. Like I said, it's, it's a lot. There's a lot of panels. Those are big screens, but the, the room is big. I mean, it's a large room and it, that means you're going to, you need big screens. People were blown away. Yeah. It, it was a, it was a feature in the room. Yeah. When you walk in, you're just like, Whoa. Yeah. Especially, I definitely noticed it at the relate conference. People were, yeah. Well, because those are pastors and and, produ- and production staffs and everything from right. churches, and so they're coming in to look. That's I mean, they are coming there to look and learn, scope and, and see. hope. Yeah, scope and hope. Um, <laughs> well, base, I did it. Yeah, can so, I get an LED wall? Yeah, you can. Yeah, call us up. <laughs> we get, we Crowd get design group. Of, we get a lot of conversations about 
everyone wants an LED wall these days. And but the crazy thing is, I mean, we we don't sell projectors often anymore. No, because because of everything that's happened, like we said at the beginning of this, that the price coming down on them and the speed getting better and it being easier to work with and better controllers and you know everything. Now it's like, yeah, you you probably should stretch to do LED panels if yeah. if you can. The benefits are huge. It was just the price holding us back. It was always the price. Yeah. And it, as long as you could get into a pixel pitch that made sense for your right. application. No one likes a really big pixel pitch and you're like close to the wall right. and you all you're seeing is dots. Yeah. And I've seen applications like that. Yeah. And it's like, dude, you should have just saved your money. Right. A, a, a projector would have been better. Yeah. Projector or just wait. Yeah. Wait and do it later. But if you can, if you can hit your pixel pitch for your, your viewing distance, uh, you are now emitting light. You are not reflecting light off of a projector screen. Right. You are pushing light. And we know that because what what percentage are we pushing these these panels right now? Um, I think they were around half. So 50% brightness. Right. That's the difference. It yeah. is emitting light into your eyes so much so that we have to turn it down. Right. Um, People can stand in front of the screen. It's a whole new world of, you know, if you have a projector, if you're listening to this and you have a projector at your church and you deal with that all the time of you know, people putting their arms up and they're in the projector and you you can't have stuff, you can't have graphics behind you because of it unless you have a rear projector and then you have this, this whole issue. If there's ambient light, you're losing yeah. luminance, you're losing... Even the lights from your stage. I mean, stage lighting. The stage and right. washing your screen out. It's everything that we dealt with for years dealing with projectors. Right. Goes away. And yeah. now does, it not only goes away, it turns into this big tool this creative tool. huge creative tool that you have right and you can just make your room look like whatever you want in any week i mean it is the yeah. it is the way it so, is the way to do it yeah because we come from the old school yeah of uh of church stage designs we did stage designs. we did stage designs, physical designs but out of like wood and stuff yeah we built them yeah we uh, there. I remember there was that website? I forget what it is. We should find something it. something like churchstagedesigns.com or something. Yeah. I mean, it is something like and that. And just had ideas and, you know. Because this is when you couldn't afford an LED wall. Yeah. People were starting to talk about it, but there's no way. You couldn't do it. Yeah, this is like 12 years ago. Maybe you had projectors. 12, 13 years ago. But so. you, like you said, you have all the issues with projectors. So what do you do? You do a set design. You build something on your stage, on your back wall, to make Pal it look like not a black curtain. Pallets and pars. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, those pallets, I mean, that was like... Pallet wood. Pallet wood. Anything, anything from Home Depot. like Bubble wrap. Yeah, whatever. Lights, stringing, fabric stuff. We did so much stuff with that. I think the, the best one we ever did was the... Uh, the, the ball. circles and straws, yeah, the, the, ball, the, the balls, globes and yeah. straws, the balls from uh, like a, it was like a, like a craft Chuck, store, Chuck E. Cheese ball, yeah, like we had to buy them in bulk, yeah, and then you put you cut straws and put them on a string, that took for freaking ever, dude, but it looked awesome. Well, it's, I mean, but that's what it was. That's so that's where we came from. That's what we came from a long time ago. Now you have a graphic designer, yeah. So you have an LED wall behind you. And you have a graphic designer you, do something cool. And then you put pallet wood on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you still want the look. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. We should just do that. Go back to the pallet <laughs> yeah. look, but via LED go wall. To that, go to that site, the stage design site, and take the images <laughs> and yeah. post them up there. We should do a throwback and I mean, and just try yeah. to replicate one of those. Pallet, pallet wood or yeah. the fabric or the balls or whatever. Yeah, we have some wild ones, man. But, but that, yeah, that's the new world. It's 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 so much more versatile. And now behind you, you can make it look like, I mean, it's obvious if 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 you know how the Mandalorian right. was filmed, right. it was filmed on a volume, right. which is a, just a big LED wall, and they use game uh, like they use game engines and stuff, right. and they use camera tracking, and so essentially the Mandalorian is on you know a set that has like dirt on the ground, but then it's just an LED wall above them and, uh, and behind them. Right. And everywhere that camera moves, the actual scene changes behind it so that you get that, the correct um, perception or the correct right. movement of the camera. And so that's an LED screen. I mean, and it looks like they're on whatever. Yeah, I'm looks, so bad. It with looks it. real. Star Wars name. Tatooine. Nope. Or Tatooine. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it looks like you're on Tatooine. Wow, we're on Tatooine. Now you're on an LED wall screen, a volume. But that's that's uh, what you can do now. Yeah, you can you can just put any background behind you, and it'll look creative on on camera or look intentional. Maybe you're maybe you're doing like a Christmas um, series, and it wants to be like you know family at home Christmas right. series, and so it looks like a house. It looks like a you know a, a beautiful home with a with a tree, you know, a well lit tree right. and a fireplace and stockings, and it looks like pastors walking around in a living room. Right, you can do that. I mean, yeah, it's this is the way now. So, is that from the Mandalorian? <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. It is the way. Yeah, well, LED walls. We tied it all together. Is the way. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it it is it has just changed in the past few years to where this is doable now. Yep, it really is. And obviously, there's always a budget. You might look at this and be like, "Oh my gosh, there's no way I could afford it." Well, your budget's probably different, but this thing had a budget too. I mean, every job we do has has budgets, no matter how big or small. There's always a budget. So you might look at a big job and think, oh, they have endless money and do whatever they want, whatever. It's never like that. There's always a tight budget. We're always cutting stuff to make it happen. Right. Um, it's all relative um, with your budget. So we work well with the budget. Because we're, we're, because we're church dudes, Yeah, uh, we had to do things on a budget all the time. Yeah. And I think that's one of the the great things about our company is that we we do work well with a, with a budget and we never go over. Yeah, we never go over. You can't. You can't because we were in those positions at a time in our lives, right? And we had a certain amount of money to work with, and that was it. Like right. you don't, you can't go over that. People are uh, clients are perfectly okay with saying yes to a project if they know exactly how much it's going to cost them. No one likes when you show up and say, "Uh, we forgot something." Right you owe this much more. Right. <laughs> That's unacceptable. Right. That that equals a client just being mad at you. Right. So it's part of our integrity. It's part of, you know, that's why we take very careful, you know, um, we, we design these things very carefully and yep. we put our proposals together very carefully because we know essentially once we give them this quote, like that's it, signed We're off, make it happen. unless it's a thousand percent outside of our control. Yeah, if they want to add something. Oh, or they change things or like, Whatever. Right. We're doing a... They decide to go bigger. We're doing a renovation whatever. and they knock down a wall and they find right. the Ark of the Covenant and we have to work around it all of a sudden. Right. It has nothing to do with us. Right. But that uh, that's a huge thing. Yep. So everyone has a budget. Yep. I haven't been given a blank check yet. And I always say it, the day that someone gives me a blank check, I'll make it awesome. <laughs> we'll, make, we'll make it awesome. <laughs> It'll be awesome. But um, um, until then... Probably won't happen. Probably won't happen. <laughs> if you have a blank check at home and want to give it to us, we will make something awesome for you. Yeah. So, yeah. Any, I mean, anything else to talk about on this? I think I went through all the content. Yeah, I think we're good. Um, we talked about a bunch of this stuff. I don't know. One other little note, like any problems or issues after the install that came up. So one thing that's happened is because we have used this new technology with the processor, um, we've had to, like I, we said before, we it's in beta version, like the software is beta. Yep. And so there are some features that they don't we, have that they don't have yet and that mm. we wanted and that yeah. they wanted. Um, so we've been waiting on that, but that was up. We were up front at the beginning about it, but that is something that's kind of just lingered along. Uh, it looks like we actually got an email today. <laughs> oh, do we? <laughs> Saying that, Oh, they, for the, for the software that they're releasing the software update yeah. publicly, even it'll be their first one. So you hear you heard it here for here, here we go. You heard it here first, <laughs> folks. <laughs> um, other than that, I mean this this project was very successful. Um, it yeah. was a massive uh, visual change in the mm-hmm. room. Um, the logistics of putting it together and making it all happen on the timeline, on the budget, with the certain challenges we had with the latency. Um, with the de- with the design, with the electrical, all that stuff, it really went about as good as it could have gone. Right. We ran into some problems with the hippo, like we said. That stuff happens on every project. Something comes up. It's, n- it's never as easy as you think it's going to be. There's it ne- always yeah, it never something. works. That's technology. That's <laughs> never technology. works. It, ne- it never works when you plug it in. It always has to be. You always have to make it work. Right. But that's all normal stuff. Yeah, uh, we're so used to it. 
but yeah, it went really, really well. Uh, the church, I believe, is is happy, um, and hopefully they can use this thing for a long time. Absolutely. Yep. Well, I think that that's it. So, um, I hope you liked our first I mean, podcast or Crowncast podcast. Uh, please like and subscribe, and all those other things that you're supposed to say in every video. Yeah. Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, we're gonna keep doing this. If you have ideas or questions you want us to talk about or do a co- podcast on or yeah. whatever, let us know. Um, we're open to ideas. We have a lot of projects we can do with. This was a big one, but we, we'll do small ones too. Just yeah, it depends on you know where we're at. But a lot of different projects. Um, yeah, so we're uh, and and also if you're looking for an integrator, we're the we're the ones for you. Okay. So uh, Crown are. Design Group, we are. You know, we're based in Bradenton, Florida, but we go all over. We're mostly in Florida. We do a lot of projects in Florida, but um, we're all over. We're all over the Multiple states. states yeah. We're up in Indiana. I'm, I'm, I'm right heading up. To, that's why I'm <laughs> dressed like this. I'm, hit, I'm heading up to Indiana uh, this afternoon. Launching a church up there. Launching a church, a brand new build that we help design uh, from the ground up. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to look awesome. We'll do a we'll do a podcast on that. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, if you need anything, audio, video, lighting, um, sales, uh, service. If you're having issues, uh, if you need you need help with technical issues, we have uh, Crown Care, crowncare.help. Uh, check us out at crowndesigngroup.org for any other integration things or just hit us up. Let us know what you think. Peace out. Peace.